Hey, welcome to this video. My name is Emilio and we are logged in here, as you can see, onto a Synology NAS. Super excited to show you today uh, how to install a Linux VM. We're specifically looking at CentOS onto your Synology NAS. Now, we're not talking about a uh, you know, VMware environment and, you, and you're and you just using your Synology NAS as the storage for that VMware environment. You've got a VMware ESXi host somewhere else. We're actually running and installing the VM directly on your Synology NAS. So we're going to be doing that right now. Before we do that, please click on that button up there to subscribe, clicking on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. All right, so we are logged in. Here we are. This is our Synology NAS. Now I am running a Synology NAS that is quite new and has some good resources built into it. Uh, now, of course, you're going to need to be very considerate of where you're going to be installing your VMs um, because if you don't have enough resources, if you don't have enough CPU, enough RAM, if you don't have enough um, hard drive space, and you're going to have some trouble uh, running this and running this well. Um, you may be doing this in the demo at home. You could be doing this in a corporate work environment. So just keep that in mind. The newer, the, the Synology, the more resources, the more enterprisey, I guess the more powerful your Synology is, the better because that lets you run more VMs. Um, and even if you're going to run just one, it actually lets you allocate more resources to the VM. Because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using some of the resources that are built into your Synology NAS and sharing them with the virtual machine that we're going to be building. So if your Synology NAS has um, you know, 8 gig of RAM inside of it, then you're going to be borrowing a portion of that to allocate to the VM that we're going to be building. Uh, so then your Synology NAS may run slightly slower because some of the resources have been allocated out to the virtual machine. So just keep that in mind very, very upfront. So here we are, we're logged in. Um, log in, you need to log in ideally as an admin, um, which is what we have done. We've logged in as an administrator. And the great thing about Synology is that you actually have some software that you can go and download from the package center to actually allow you to install virtual machines, any sort of virtual machine, which is brilliant across a whole bunch of operating system versions as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up package center first and foremost right here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is in here under search, I'm just gonna look for virtual and type in enter. And you see the hit right here, virtual machine manager, okay? Now, do remember that um, you need to be running a relatively new version of the, um, the actual Synology software. If it doesn't show up, it could be because you're running an older version or because the app store is not up to date. Um, but if it does show up, great. And if it shows up, we click on install uh, and that will actually install the virtual machine manager software. So your NAS will need access out to the internet. Otherwise you can go and download the virtual machine manager software and do a manual install and then point it to that installer. Or you can do it directly from the internet, which is what I'm doing right here. Okay, so we'll let that do its thing. Uh, that is installing. And then once it's finished, of course that will now show up. Okay, so that's finished, it says open, but you can also click up here and then you'll see that virtual machine manager here is listed. So we can go ahead and open that up. And here we are presented with a wizard. Now, this is the very first step. And what we're going to be doing here is selecting the volume to be used as storage for virtual machines and check if the host settings are suitable for running virtual machines. Essentially, it's just two first steps that you need to do before we can even start talking about building uh, a virtual machine, which is what you see right here. So we're going to select next. And uh, here's a few things. Um, there's a vSwitch, ARP, there's storage stuff, there's compute stuff that essentially is just a prerequisite that needs to be run on your NAS to make sure that it is eligible to allow it to run virtual machines. Now, in my case, you'll see that these two first ones are already enabled and these next two are eligible. Now, if you have some of these that are not eligible or they're disabled, uh, you need to go and get that working first, enable them. Uh, disable them if they, sorry, enable them if they are disabled and make them eligible if they're not eligible, if they're ineligible. Um, but sometimes if they are not good for you, um, you may not be actually, you may not be able to run a VM on your uh, NAS, which is a real disappointment um, because you're watching this video for that purpose. So you may be running an older version or one that is not compatible for this. But just because it's, um, it is 
ineligible. Sometimes you can still get around it, but generally I'd recommend make sure that all of these look okay. Then the next step is now to select the volume. So of course you've got your NAS. Your NAS is made up of all of your disks inside of your NAS that are made into volumes. Now you could have one volume where all your disks are compressed and made into one big pool, one big volume, or you could have multiple volumes on your NAS already configured. Uh, if you're the storage admin, if you're looking after this, uh, you probably already know how that's been set up, but you now need to select the volume where your virtual machines, uh, where your virtual machine is going to be living. Where is it physically going to sit? So in my case, I've just got the one volume and I've got more than enough uh, available space. Of course, you'll need to have available space to be able to do this. So if that's the volume that you want, great. We can now click on next uh, and that is really it. So it'll do a little bit of stuff in the background, um, get that uh, environment ready, at least the hard drive space, creating some virtual allocated space for this and then we should have a big tick. If yours does not have a tick, we may you may need to do some troubleshooting and try that again, finish. Now that is it, okay? So the first thing we've done is we've now got the host ready to go. Now traditionally, when we're talking about virtualization, uh, you've got VMware ESXi, you've got a server that's made into a host, you've got Hyper-V, which is Microsoft one, it's made into a host. Here, we've just made our Synology NAS into a host. So it's acting as a host or it's acting as a server you'll see that there are no virtual machines set up and the storage is the volume that we just created. And here is our volume with the space uh, around my volume. Uh, here is, this is my NAS, this is called Aguero Synology. And you'll see that it shows me some stats around how much percentage use right now, my CPU and my RAM and my LAN is currently using. So up and down, as well as um, the percentages of RAM and CPU. So you can already see that right now, I've got, um, it's not too busy. My CPU and my RAM is pretty good, so I could build some VMs and I should be okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now select uh, create, all right? This is where we actually go and create our VM. You can also import a VM and we're gonna go and select the, uh, the image file, the actual installation image file for our CentOS um, ISO. Now, of course, you have to go, have gone to the CentOS website. So you go into Google, you download the, the, the relevant installation file that you need for your CentOS um, installation, your ISO file, you download that. Um, there's a couple of things you can do from there. You can firstly go into image right here and add the ISO file into here from your computer. You can actually upload it. But what I like to do is I like to keep my ISOs on my NAS anyway. So through the file station, um, I go into here and I create a relevant folder and then I upload it into there. And then all I need to do is I need to go into virtual machine and then navigate to that ISO file. So let's go and select create. Uh, we're gonna select uh, Linux, create a Linux virtual machine, okay? And select next. Here is the storage. So this is the storage that we are gonna be using. This is what we have selected. Make sure of course that you've got uh, enough uh, capacity available. Now we give our VM a relevant name. So what do we actually want to call this VM? So just for now, I'm gonna call this uh, CentOS Server Demo, because it's just a demo for me. Uh, now it's gonna ask me for how much CPU and memory do we want to allocate this particular VM? Now, of course, you've got your Synology NAS. You can see on your resources how much is being used. You know how much capacity uh, RAM your Synology has got, so you'll be able to allocate that much. But if you give it too much to the VM, then your NAS is potentially gonna run slightly slower. So you want to be just mindful of that. Uh, so you can add one, two, three, four CPUs. You can add one, two, three, four uh, gigs of memory. You can also set megabytes if you wanna get more specific. But the more you give it, the slower your NAS will run. Uh, not a problem though, because you can set it low and then go and change it later on. So just for now, we're going to say uh, one CPU with two gigs of memory. We're gonna leave video card as the default and select next. How much do we wanna actually allocate to this uh, server, right? To the actual Linux environment, the actual main um, hard drive that is going to be used on the, Synology, on the actual um, uh, the, the, the VM on the Synology. So we're gonna say 40 gig, and of course this can be changed later on if you so choose to, but I recommend giving it a size that is relevant for you, um, including any sort of growth and installation of files and software as you so need to. Um, the default network, we're gonna leave that as a default. It will use the network that is part of 
your Synology uh, NAS already. So we're gonna leave that at the default. And here we now have to go and point our ISO file um, on the Synology to that file that you have downloaded for your CentOS, okay? So we're gonna click on here. Okay, it says our mounted currently, we're gonna click on browse, and now we're gonna go and navigate. Now I've got all of my ISOs listed uh, under a specific folder. So I'm gonna go down to my Linux folder right here, and I've got CentOS, and the current version that I'm gonna be using is this one right here. But you may be running an earlier version of CentOS or a later version, that's fine. Just select your relevant ISO that you have downloaded, making sure, of course, that it is mountable. Um, the rest we're gonna sort of leave as the default. We're not gonna really change anything else on there. And we're gonna select next. Who do you want to actually administer this VM? So this is now the admin credentials or the, the permissions on your Synology NAS. So just for now, I'm gonna select uh, the admin, but you can go and change this and add additional users into here, different permissions as you so choose to. Next, a bit of a summary on what's going on. Uh, you can select power on the virtual machine after creation, or you can just click on apply and we can do that later. Okay, so that VM will now start to get uh, created. You'll see here it is right here. Okay, it's created the VM itself and you can see a bit of a status update on what is going on. Uh, the virtual disk that's using, the network disk that it's using, uh, how much it's currently using right now, but nothing because it is powered off. So what we can do right here is, is we can select it and select power on. And now once that's ready, you'll see that this connect button should light up and there it is. So we can now actually see what's going on. And right here, you'll see that here is my CentOS installation. So we can test the media, install, troubleshoot, or the very top option being install uh, CentOS, which we're gonna select that and go okay. And now the actual pre setup stage will now begin on this server. So if you're seeing this, it's a good sign. It means that the actual ISO has been discovered. It has mounted the ISO and it's booted from the ISO. Now, if you haven't even seen that CentOS installation screen, it's something uh, gone wrong. Something's gone wrong in that setup. So it could be the ISO is corrupted, the ISO is not a bootable ISO, or you've done something incorrect when you've been setting up that VM itself. But um, you'll have to go back and troubleshoot that. Um, but if everything's good, then you should be seeing this and everything is loading and setting it up. And now we're here at our login screen. How brilliant, this is great. Uh, everything has done what it needs to do. You now select your language. You now select uh, here, I've got English Australia. If you can tell from my dodgy accent, uh, we can click on continue. Of course, you can go and customize some stuff. Software, it's all of your local media. We're gonna be building the server with the GUI, but if you do want to go and actually customize some stuff in here, let's say you just want the command line. If you have additional selected software, you can go and uh, do that. You can do all of that in here, or you can do it, of course, later on once you've actually gone and installed. Uh, we're now gonna select this area right here, making sure that our 40 gig hard drive is what is selected, and that looks good, all right and that is all fine. So again, you can go and customize some stuff in here. Our network will be off by default, uh, and you can set all your localization stuff as well, your date and time if you wanna change that, but you can do all this once your um, actual VM is built. Uh, so now the configuration is you know, commencing. Uh, right in here, we can go and set up our root password and create our user. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create our root password that we want to use and then my user creation. So I'm gonna say Emilio user. Okay, and now we just wait. So now that uh, installation continues and then we'll have a look once it's done. That'll finish after some time and then we can click on reboot right there. And then our server will reboot. Now, if you've got up to here, great. If you had any errors, any issues during that installation, you'll have to go back and sort of check up what has happened there, but then Everything looks good, so our Linux should now boot, and we then can log in. Now we'll mention if you do get stuck in any of these spots, let's say when you're rebooting, uh, it doesn't boot up correctly, the VM doesn't boot up. Uh, what I recommend is you can do a couple things for troubleshooting, you can go back in to the actual uh, area right here, uh, select your VM, and then unmount that hard drive that we did before. Uh, the actual, the ISO, sorry, from the hard drive. Uh, or you can also try to shut down and restart the VM uh, if it does get stuck during a boot phase. So we're just gonna accept the uh, license agreement. You'll see that you had to click on that, otherwise you couldn't continue. If you're okay with that license agreement, we can now select done. License has been accepted. 
and we can then finish the configuration. And here we are, date, time at the very top. Here is my user, Emilio user, and we've got CentOS. So now I can just log in, throw in the password that we set. We've got some configuration stuff if you wanna do all of this and connect it to certain services. And that's it. So now here we are within CentOS OS. Uh, you can treat it how you would any other VM. Uh, I would obviously recommend now going in and configuring some of the network stuff so you can connect to it uh, a different way, the same way that any other server would work. Uh, you can go and shut it down right from here. You can also shut it down right from there. So there you have it, that was it. Uh, thank you so much for spending the time and hopefully you now have your virtual machine running. It is running and it's absolutely awesome that you can get um, VMs running natively on your Synology NAS. And the great thing is you can install a plethora of VMs on here. You can install all the Windows, all the Linux VMs that you want. Of course, considering that you've got some limited resources perhaps on your Synology NAS, you're gonna be using the resources built into it. So do keep that in mind, but it is awesome. And I love that that flexibility is available to you. That's it. Thank you so much for spending the time. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, clicking on that bell for all of my latest video releases. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.